So here's a not E base. What a pain. Uh, what do I do with this? Well, last time when we were dealing with exponentials, we had to do a few. Um, we had to do a few backflips with like rules with exponentials and that kind of thing, the um, index laws and what have you. Mercifully, this is a little bit easier, right? You've got a problem. You don't know how to do it. You don't know how to solve it. So what's this mathematical technique, this strategy that we use over and over again when you encounter a problem that you don't know how to do? What do we try? What do we search for? What are you thinking, today? Yeah, I want to change a problem I don't know how to solve to make it look like one I do know how to solve, and then I can just, off I go, right? And in this case, the thing you're gonna use is the change of base law. Do you remember that? Okay, now, you haven't done logs for a little while. You haven't done logs for a little while, so maybe you do not remember what goes over here. Um, do you have your reference sheets there? Do you have your reference sheets there? If you turn to the second page, I mean the second page which actually has stuff on it, um, not the page after the title page. If you have a look at the, the second page, the second two unit page before it actually turns around to the back, uh, you will see the change of base law. It's written there, right? This is the one and one only log law that you will find on the entire reference sheet because um, it's sort of the weirdest. It's not as easy to get out of the exponentials. So I want you to look at that closely. I want you to look at it closely. And I want you to look at what we've got here. I want to write something here in place of log base 2 of x that I can actually differentiate. So it's going to have base e in it, right? What would you write? It's going to be a fraction. There's going to be a log of some kind on the top and a log of some kind on the bottom. What's it going to have? Any takers? What's on the top? OK, so log base e of x, just because when I normally say log x, I would imply log e, but base e, but because I've got another base flying around, I will specify just so you know what on earth I'm talking about. What about the bottom? E, two. Have we used the law correctly? Just check, make sure it looks right, yep. So you can see the new base, it appears twice, and the way I remember like which one goes to which, because you can use the reference sheet, but to be honest, the two unit component of the reference sheet is not really designed for you. You guys are extension students, and it's there as a kind of backup, but you're costing time every time you go there. Um, once you get a little, a little more familiar with this in jogging memory, you shouldn't need to go to the reference sheet to find this. I remember the two is lower and the x is higher, so the two is lower and the x is higher. It's not that hard to remember, okay? Now, have a look at this. The top, do I know how to differentiate that? I, I do, right? That's the, that's the law I just derived, okay? I know how to deal with that. What about the bottom? What is this thing? It's just a constant, right? E is a constant, 2 is a constant. I don't really need to worry about it. In fact, if I wanted to make it really clear, I would just take it out the front, right? Because it's just a constant multiplied by the derivative of log x. Is that okay? I actually haven't done any differentiation yet, which is why that derivative guy is still there. And now I'm pretty much there. This is 1 over x, this guy over here. Yeah, so 1 over log 2 times 1 over x. I guess a nice simple way to write it would be 1 over x log 2. Okay, so if you compare this to what happens when you differentiate an exponential with an unnatural base, there's kind of this symmetry there, right, which shouldn't be that surprising since it's the same object looked at from a different perspective. Okay, now the last one to have a think about to let you go on these questions is chain rule. Now, this is a bit tricky. I want you to see if, if you can start from this guy, I'm not even going to um, leave much space for it because I reckon you guys manage. If you started from this, log of any function, right? So there's an inside function just like you're used to dealing with, with chain rule, okay? How'd you, how could you come up with, like what substitutions could you put in to actually find the derivative for this and get a rule out of it? If that's a bit too abstract for you, put something real in there. Put something like, say, log of, I don't know, 2x minus 1. What substitution would you introduce? How would you chain together the derivatives to get an answer for this? See what you can come up with. I'll give you a two or three minute head start, and then I'll show you how it looks on the board if you're completely at a brick wall. Okay? Here's what we'll do. We'll start at the bottom because it's always easier, I sort of threw you in the deep end, um, it's always easier to start with something concrete and then generalize from there, but if you're a super brain who's like, I can, I can go straight for the abstract one, then, then good for you, okay? If I had this bottom one down here, right, if what I was differentiating was this, 
It might be a little easier to deal with if I actually had a name for this function, right? All this is is differentiate blah, whatever comes on after that, right? So here's what I'll do. I'm just going to call this guy y. Okay. Now remember, chain rule for integration and for differentiation, it's really just like a, a shortcut name version of substitution. Right? You're like, I, let me substitute something for this, the inside function, and that makes it easier to deal with, just like we did before. So I'm going to introduce a substitution. We always use u. What would you like me to put? The inside function, 2x minus 1 will do. In most of the cases that you have to deal with, the um, substitution you have to make is either given to you or blindingly obvious um, for those uh, brave souls who do extension 2, like you get something that you're like, what am I even supposed to substitute into this? And actually half of the problem is working out what you're supposed to substitute. Thankfully for us, it's just like whatever you pretty much see in those brackets. Okay. Now once you've got that, you need to of course find the derivative of this guy, which mercifully is simple. In this case it's just 2. Done. While I've got a derivative of d on dx, I also need the other derivative that I'm going to chain together to give me the derivative I want. So I'm going to do the substitution over here. And now I can find dy on du. These are the two derivatives that will fit together to make the derivative I want. What is the derivative of log u? We just derived this. It's 1 on u. That, that's the variable of choice in this case because I did my substitution. OK, I'm ready to go. I can put these two guys together, dy on dx will be first derivative multiplied by second derivative, not that the order matters that much in this case. 1 on u times 2. Of course, u was just something I introduced to make the question, render the question easier to deal with. But now that I've done the differentiation part, I can just put u back to what it started with, right? So this looks like, put that on the, the numerator where it belongs, 2 on 2x minus 1. Okay. So if I were to try and generalize this and say, well, what happens if it's not 2x minus 1? What happens if it's, if, if it's some other thing, right? Some general function, f of x, OK? Well, watch what happens as we flow through, right? I'm not going to substitute in u equals that. I'll substitute in u equals whatever that function happens to be, 2x minus 1, you know, x squared minus 4, whatever you've gotten there. So that will become f of x. Okay. Now being in this case, I don't actually know what f of x is, then when I do this differentiation, I don't know that it's 2 or it's 14 or e to the x, so I'm just going to call it f dash. Right? Now you guys know I don't, I don't love, I'm not in love with dash notation because it's ambiguous sometimes, especially when you've got powers flying around. But in this case, when you use function notation, it's reasonably unambiguous that that's what we're talking about. Okay? So f, f dash. What about this line? Is this line going to be any different now that I'm considering a general function rather than this specific one? Like the whole point of choosing u to be that function is so that I can get back to a simple thing, just log of u. So this line will be the same, which means this line will be the same. This is where things become different, right? That 2 over there is only 2 because of this guy, right? But in this case, it's going to be, well, that's going to be f dash. And this u is just f. Okay, So what I'm getting, my final line, is that dy on dx would be this guy. So you learn chain rule when you had to deal with polynomials, stuff raised to a power. You learned chain rule when you had to deal with, I rubbed it off already, when you had to deal with exponentials. Now you've got like a new version of chain rule for logs, chain rule sort of changes clothes every time it deals with a different family of functions. Okay, So this guy here, if you wanted to have a big box around something, it's the derivative of log of any function you like. Okay, You're just going to get, take that inside thing, it'll be f dash on f. That's a nice, succinct way to state it. Okay.